Today's the day I announce which tools I recommend using in 2024. This is the list of the best of the best. Creme de la creme. Actually, that is not true. This will not be a video about the best tools. There are so many types of tools and services in the DevOps space that it would be impossible for me to make a list of the best ones, since that would probably result in dozens or hundreds of tools and services. Instead, I will focus on the tools that are relatively new or the tools that I did not use much in the past, but are going to be part of my daily life in 2024. In other words, I will focus on specific areas I am working in or those that I believe are interesting. As for the tools, well, they will not necessarily always be the best or the most important ones, but instead those I consider interesting or more likely the tools that were not part of my tool built in the past, but now they are. So the best of 2024 is more like the best of the new tools and services or those that uh, matured enough to be used in 2024. All, and I repeat, all the tools and services I will mention are great. And one can easily make an argument that choosing any, any of them would be a good choice. So you can also look at the whole list as great choices. Nevertheless, there will be winners in each category. Now, as I already mentioned, I will not cover all the areas, but rather those that I believe proved themselves in 2023 and deserved becoming a part of my tool build in 2024. So without further ado, let's get started. To begin with, there are service catalogs. Many think that UIs are what's needed to build an IDP or an internal developer platform or simply a platform. I think that's terribly wrong since platforms are much more than a UI on top of something. Hence, I call them service catalogs or UIs on top of platforms. Nevertheless, that was one of the most sought after types of projects and services in 2023, so they deserve to be the first category. We saw Backstage becoming one of the most popular and the most contributed projects in the CNCF landscape, so it is definitely a candidate for the best of 2024. However, I believe that Backstage is well suited as the base upon which vendors can build the UIs on top of the tools they're offering, rather than something that should be used directly by the end users. Backstage is powerful, definitely powerful, but horrible at the same time. It is complicated to set up and maintain, and it requires serious, and I repeat, serious engineering effort. There are many alternatives to Backstage, but one that, in my opinion, stands out is Port. While Port has its own issues, I believe that it is the best we have at the moment. There is work to be done to make it Kubernetes friendly. It can only be used as SaaS. There is no self-managed option and it is not uh, open source. Still, even with those defects, I believe that Port is the best we have at the moment and I'm proclaiming it the winner of the tool I strongly recommend you to use in 2024. Now, before we move to the next category, please note that I have videos about many and I repeat, many of the tools and services we are discussing today. Links are in the description, so feel free to check them out if you're curious to learn more. And now we can go back to the next category. So next we have, what do we have? Application management. Application management by itself can be a massive area to explore since there are many things we should consider when managing applications. Should we run apps as managed services or self-manage them? If you choose the latter, should that be Kubernetes or Wasm or something else? How do we build them? And so on and so forth. Since I cannot cover all those, this year I will focus on how we manage manifests of the applications we run in Kubernetes clusters. Kubernetes accepts the desired state to be defined in YAML, or to be more precise, YAML is the only format Kubernetes API accepts. Nevertheless, very few are writing YAML directly. Instead, we use different formats and tools that allow us to define resources programmatically, or through templates, or overlays, or you name it. Among those formats and tools, we have Helm that allows free text templating. It was one of the first tools 
of its kind, and it is the de facto standard, at least when third-party applications are concerned. Then we have Customize, which was developed by one of the Kubernetes C groups, and now it is integral part of uh, KubeCouple itself. Unlike Helm, Customize does not support templating, but instead it overlays pure YAML. We also have Carvel YTD that is a mixture of templating and overlays, and Grafana Tanka that is an implementation of JSONet. If you prefer using one of the existing languages, like TypeScript, Python, Java, Go, what's or not, we can use CDKs that will convert those into YAML. We can also opt for Q that is a language designed to simplify tasks involving defining and generating and validating various data structures. That, as a matter of fact, is a good candidate for defining Kubernetes manifests because they are, after all, data structures. YAML is a data structure language itself. Now, if we do opt for Q, we can use Timoni that in a way is like Helm but based on Q instead of free text templating. I had periods working almost exclusively with all those, but at the end, I settled with Timoni. It was a missing piece of the puzzle that prevented me from switching to Q. So, Timoni and through it, Q are my choices for 2024. The next category is pipelines or what you might call CI CD. Pipelines haven't changed much in a long, long, long time. The way I see it, they are glorified cron jobs that allow us to execute a series of steps in a specific order and are triggered by events like, for example, commits to Git repos. We have Jenkins for around 15 years now. It's a bit outdated, but still one of the most commonly used tools of that kind. We also got GitHub Actions that is very useful for those keeping their code in GitHub and GitLab CI for those who prefer GitLab. We also have Kubernetes native tools built from ground up to leverage the power of Kubernetes. Those would be Tecton and Nargo workflows. There are, of course, many, many, many others. The way I see it, they're all doing more or less the same job. And the question is mostly whether we want a self-managed or managed service and how much time we want to invest in maintenance. But there is something new that does not necessarily replace any of those, yet that could be a significant change for better. It is a tool that allows us to define pipelines that can run anywhere, that leverage containers, it can be defined in almost any language, but that still need to run in one of those other pipelines. That tool is Dagger and I'm moving most of my pipelines to it. Hence, Dagger is my choice for 2024. Observability comes next. Observability is a huge, massive area. We need to fetch, store and query logs somewhere and for storage my first choice is whichever store my cloud provider offers, but when that is not an option, I prefer Locky. Most of Grafana tools are amazing and Locky is not an exception. Logs alone are not enough and we need metrics. The de facto standard for metrics is Prometheus, but it has a big problem. It does not scale. And that's where Victoria Metrics comes in. It is compatible with Prometheus, which is great, yet it is more efficient than it scales. Finally, the third pillar of observability is tracing. Jager is, in a way, the standard, but Grafana Tempo fixes some of its shortcomings. To tie all those together, we need dashboards and Grafana is the most common choice. And then there is alerting and my choice is anything, <laughs> literally anything but Prometheus alerts. One sticks from the crowd and that one is Robusta. We might also need a tool dedicated to troubleshooting and for that I prefer Commodore. Now, the problem with all those is that we need to combine them and we need to manage them and it's a mess. That's why I selected two finalists as all-in-one solutions. The first is Pixie, which is all-in-one solution with a very, very innovative approach. And the other one is Ground Cover that is a combination of best of breed tools with a touch of FBPF and quite a few unique features on top. Between those two, my choice for 2024 is ground cover. It's awesome and I strongly recommend it to those who want to simplify their observability stack. And the next in line is databases. When it comes to databases, the best choice one can make is to use a managed service. Databases are painful to manage and externalizing that to AWS or Google Cloud or Azure or whichever cloud provider you're using is often the best choice. An interesting alternative to pick three 
providers is Ivan that also offers managed databases, but unlike cloud providers that have a limited number of databases in their catalog, Ivan supports almost all databases one can think of. Now, for those not running in public clouds, that is obviously not an option. Also, for some, there are other obstacles for adopting managed services like the price, lack of control, regulations, and whichever other impediments might lead one to a self-managed choice. For those cases, Kubernetes operators are a way to go. Kubernetes is not only about stateless applications anymore, and we have plethora of options when it comes to databases. And one of those is Kubeblox, which is similar to Ivan in a way that it supports many databases, but it is self-managed and relies fully on Kubernetes operators. The big advantage is that it supports almost any database you can think of. However, if you're looking for something specifically designed for PostgreSQL and you're not afraid of Kubernetes, Cloud Native PG or CMPG is probably the best option. Hence, it is my choice for 2024. Now, PostgreSQL is useless without a schema, and for that, a clear winner is Atlas Operator. So, within the database category, I have two winners, CMPG and Atlas Operator. Next, we have infrastructure and service management. When it comes to managing infrastructure and services, dominant tools are those from the configuration management and infrastructure is called categories. Your choice might be Ansible if you deal with mutable infrastructure, typically infrastructure in your own data centers. If you're already in the immutable cloud native world, then you're probably using Terraform unless you prefer to define resources in your favorite programming language, in which case you're probably using Plumi. None of those is my choice for 2024. For 2024, my choice is Kubernetes. You heard me, not a specific tool, but Kubernetes. We came a long way since Kubernetes inception, and now it is clear that it is not only about containers. Kubernetes is a platform on top of which we build platforms that act as control planes to manage any kind of resources, no matter whether those are containers running in Kubernetes or Vasm or VMs or cloud resources or bare metal or databases or anything else. Kubernetes is not only about containers. It is first and foremost an extensible API with controllers that listen to events and manage whatever we want them to manage. It is a control plane for everything, and that includes infrastructure and services. Now, with that in mind, I could proclaim as a winner Crossplane or Cluster API or Kubevirt or one of the many other Kubernetes native tools that are built from ground up to manage resources from inside Kubernetes. I will not choose any of those. Instead, the winner and the one you should choose to manage infrastructure and services in 2024 is Kubernetes itself. The important thing to do is to embrace it fully as a control plane, no matter which tools you choose to extend it. There is no point fighting the inevitable. Kubernetes is the control plane. And next is security. For many, security is the most boring topic one can think of, yet it is one of the most important ones. Just as with observability, there are many different areas within security that we might need to pay attention to. We might want to detect threads on the level of processes, and that's where Falco shines. Or we might want to prevent those same threats from happening in the first place, and for that, my choice would be Kubarmor. We should also define policies that will prevent us from shooting ourselves in the foot. That's where Kyverno shines. And we will even have policies baked into Kubernetes once validating admission policy becomes GA or production ready. We also need to deal with secrets, and my preferred choice is external secrets operator or BSO. Now, external secrets operator pulls secrets, stored somewhere, and sinks them into Kubernetes secrets. Yet, we need a way to pull secrets from other places as well, be it uh, from laptops or from CI-CD pipelines or from anywhere else. And that's where Teller comes in. It is a tiny open source project donated to CNCF, and since it is a CLI and not a Kubernetes operator, uh, those secrets can be pulled from anywhere. Laptops, pipelines, VMs, or wherever else. Then there is security scanning with Trivi being a great choice. The alternative is Cubescape, which has also been donated to CNCF. 
then we might want to sign images and other artifacts with six or cosign or notary and manage certificates with let's say cert manager all of those tools are great and one cannot go wrong with any of those or to be more precise one might want to combine most if not all of them anyways yet i will have to pick one and that's cubescape I'm impressed with the work they're doing and the speed with which the project is progressing. Open source version was donated to CNCF and there is also a commercial offering by Armo, the company that created Cubescape. Wait, actually, I cannot go with only one choice here. I need to pick Teller as well. Teller became indispensable to my daily work. My life would be miserable or unsafe without it. So. Cubescape and Teller are the winners, not choices, not winners in this category. And the next one is networking. Networking is the area dominated by service meshes like Istio, Linkerd and Kuma to name only a few. While all of those are fighting for the market share, there is only one almost indisputable networking solution that sits right below all of those, and that's Cilium. It is the de facto standard for Kubernetes networking, and now it is extending its reach to higher layers, including, but not limited to, service meshes. By choosing eBPF as the foundation, Cilium made the right choice at the right time. So, Cilium is my choice for 2024. Now, I could not leave it there without mentioning Gateway API. Ingress specification was probably the biggest mess Kubernetes ever had. But that mess is no more. Ingress is on the way to be replaced by Gateway API spec that by now probably already has implementation by whichever solution you're currently using for Ingress. So 2024 will be the year when Gateway API becomes the de facto standard for Ingress traffic and beyond. So within networking, the choices for 2024 are Cilium and Gateway API. And the next is a strange one. This is where I want to pick a tool that does not necessarily fit into any of the big categories. There are many tools that are outside of those big areas of development and among those, the one that has a special place in my heart is Charm. Actually, Charm is not a single tool, but a set of tools and libraries all built around the idea that the experience in terminals can be improved. If you use terminals a lot, you will certainly find Charm useful. There are CLIs for AI and for sending emails. There are libraries for building CLIs or for shell scripts that look and feel like CLIs. There are quite a few other tools and libraries that you should check out if you're a terminal junkie, like me. And the last category is from evaluate to adopt. The last category is about tech that was more in the evaluate than in the adopt group in 2023, but that I believe will be a must have in 2024. Now, there are many that moved from potentially to certainly, but only one of those had as big of an impact as eBPF. eBPF proved over and over again that it is the right way to implement observability, networking, security, and many other things. Now, to be clear, eBPF is probably not something you will use directly. You're probably not going to start writing eBPF programs yourself. However, many, and I repeat, many of the tools and services you will use in 2024 were built or will be built on top of eBPF. Heck, quite a few of those I explored in this video are eBPF based. I can safely say that eBPF was one of the most important technologies in 2023 that through solutions built on top of it, are now mature and the right choices for 2024. There you have it. The choices for 2024 are port for service catalogs, Q and Timoni for defining Kubernetes manifests, Dagger for pipelines, Ground Cover for observability, CMPG and Atlas operator for databases, Kubernetes as a control plane to manage infrastructure and services, no matter which implementation you choose, Cubescape and Teller for security, Cilium and Gateway API for networking, 
Charm as a set of tools, CLIs, and libraries for no specific category. And finally, eBPF as the foundation for many of the tools and the services you will use in 2024. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.